Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a Friday Algorithm Show. In today's video, let's discuss a very common question that we often get during a phone screening type of interview. And the question is basically this, uh, what is a stack and how would you go about implementing a stack inside of your program? So today's video, we are going to look at two very important functions that belong to a stack. And basically the first important function is called pushing and allows you to push items into your stack kind of data structure. And the second function is to kind of pop items off the top of the stack. All right, so if we have enough time at the end of today's video, I'll also show you guys how to modify a stack to support something called Swift generics. All right, so let's begin here with uh, Swift playgrounds inside of Xcode. Hopefully you guys know what this is. So I'm gonna say a class stack right here. And I'm gonna illustrate the basic skeleton of a stack right now. The stack needs to support this function called push is underscore value in like that. And for this example, I'll just push integers into my stack class. And then the second function is this pop guy right here, which returns some kind of integer. And because uh, the stack can also support an empty stack, this pop can sometimes return a nil object like that. So we need an optional int for its return value. Okay, so good stuff there. Uh, for those of you guys ha that have never ran into a stack before, or if you've never used one, here's kind of how a stack works. I'm going to create this new stack object right below, and then the stack needs to be able to push some objects onto the stack. And uh, I'll push a value of one, two, and three into the stack. So now the question is, what happens when I say, for example, stack.pop equals to first pop, what should this value return? So let's see, uh, should return some kind of question mark? Well, basically, if you have one, two, and three, when you pop the item off the stack at that state, it needs to return the topmost item, which is the value of three. So. This first pop should give us the three, but instead it's giving us the nil because our pop function is not doing very much. Okay, the question uh, that you should have now is, what kind of data structure do I need to be able to support this type of stack? And the basic, most straightforward implementation is to use something called a linked list, and I'll create a node class to support my linked list right now. All right, so what does our node class look like with a class node let value be of type int and var next be of this node guy right here initializer will take in the value and just set it to self dot value like that and the whole reason why we need these initializers is because swift doesn't allow you to create these instances without initializing these let properties like that okay Anyhow, a, sm a small detail right there. Let's modify our stack class to actually be able to support the push and pop behavior. So to do that, I'll include this variable up here called top, and this will be a type node. And so to make this very easy to follow, uh, think about what you need to do to support the pushing of this one value right here on line 28. I'm going to say top now equals to node with this value of value like that. And then for popping, I'll just return top dot value. Okay, with these two lines now inside of my stack, this right here, first pop, now returns the value of three, which it looks to be correct until you uh, do this right here, stack dot pop, and the second pop, now also returns the value of three, which is incorrect. It should really return the second value, which is two. So to kind of figure out what's going on here is to look at this pop function. And every time you return the, uh, or every time you pop, you really need to modify the top node to be the next node. In other words, I will do that by saying var, uh, perhaps current top equals top, and then top equals the next node or like that and then i need to say current top dot value is the actual return value this really needs to just be a let because we're not modifying it 
And now the uh, return values for first and second pop is three and nil. Okay, so this is a little bit better. And now we need to be able to modify push so that we keep track of what these next nodes are. So next for each one of these top nodes uh, is pretty much nil because we haven't been setting it. So to make this a little bit easier to follow as well, uh, what you need to do for push is to do kind of the same thing right here. And basically, I'm going to keep track of the next node for every time I execute one of these pushes. So let's say var is uh, var or let. Let old top equals top like that. I'm going to say top dot next, or actually top equals node value of value. So basically the same line we have down here. And then now top dot next equals old top like that. So let me clean this up, get rid of these spaces right here. And now what's happening is we get three and two for each one of these pops. So let's say let third pop equals stack dot pop. And this should, get, <coughs> should give us the one value right here. And let final pop equals stack dot pop, giving us the empty value of nil. So this is kind of how a stack would be implemented. Um, you probably need to go through this a couple of times in your head to see what the pointer of next is being modified to every time you execute one of these pushes. But this very simple implementation gets the job done. Uh, one last function that you might see inside of a stack is something called uh, peak, which lets you peak at the very top item on the, uh, on the stack and see what the value is. So to implement that, you would say int or peak return optional int, and we'll just return top dot value. I think that looks okay. And to use this, you would say stack dot peak, peak right here. I think this should give us the three value, which is exactly what it does right here. If you execute it after the push, uh, first pop, you'll peak at the very top most value, which is two like that. So very, very straightforward of uh, implementation of a stack. And you will often get asked this during an interview uh, some point in time. Uh, not every interview, but someone will most definitely ask you this question. So now that we have, let's see, some extra time to uh, think about things, I want to be able to support pushing of other objects other than integer values one, two, and three. So let's say I have some kind of user class, or not a class, but perhaps a struct. And this user struct has two properties of name of type string and also username of type string. So basic struct right here. And I'll say let me equals user of, see my name right here, and perhaps my username is that. And I'll create a user which represents you. And let's say you are you and your username is at you. So if I create this, let's uh, users stack equals stack like that. I want to be able to push users onto my stack. And in other words, I'll say users stack dot push value of me. And I also want to push the value of you onto the stack. Now I guess I'll comment out all this stuff out here. And the reason why I can't push uh, these objects onto the stack is because push only supports values of type int. So the way to solve this problem is to do two things, uh, or one of two things. And you can take a first attempt at uh, supporting this behavior by replacing each one of these int values by this user type instead. So user, uh, let me get this error out of the way. Um, user, user, and user for our node class. So doing that, let's see, make that a user as well. Making this entire modification will allow you to now push users onto the stack. So for example, I'll say let's uh, first user equals, perhaps first user pop equals uh, users stack dot pop. This now gives us, see, prints first user dot name like that. 
And I guess I'll just unwrap it with a bang. Does that work? No, I don't think I want to do that. So perhaps that is a little better. And so that gives me U, which is the first pop. And that's because you are on the top of the stack. So that's kind of how that works, right? But if I perhaps want to uncomment out this guy right here, I can't support the pushing of these integer values anymore because my push function has been modified. So wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to create these data structures uh, every time we wanted to support uh, generic objects? And that's where the idea of <coughs> generics come into play here. So how do I modify this class to support both users and integer values? Well, it's pretty easy if uh, every time you see one of these user guys right here, just put a T for the placeholder. So T and then T. And so T is uh, going to represent our generic. And for the stack class, modify this to uh, have this T parameter as well. And then the last modification you need is to also modify the node class. So every time you see a user, put a T here as well, put a T there, and also give this a T for the generic that the node is supposed to represent. Okay, so now that you have that all set up, you also need to modify this node to kind of be of type parameter or generic T. And so this can support now uh, generics of any type. So let's see, this guy right here, you can modify this now to be of type any like that. And the reason why you don't want to use any is because you actually know what the stack is, is supposed to contain. So if I specify user instead, it'll make this error go away giving me U and U right there. So if I uncomment out this, what do you think should happen? So that should be okay. The problem here is that you have the same issue where this needs to be declared as some kind of concrete type like that. And if I say int right there, everything should be okay. Let me see if I uncomment out everything. The right side uh, prints out exactly what I had before. So that's all good. And using this T generic, you can modify classes to support any type of uh, parameter you need to give it. All right, that's going to wrap it up for our stack implementation. Make sure to know how to do this before you go into any interview. Uh, it's very, very possible that you will get this interview question. All right, if you wanna download the source code for this playground project, you can find the link down below in the description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want more interview questions like this one. All right, that's going to be it for me, and I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.